For I reserve from the receive from the Lord what I have drawn to you. That the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the chalice after supper, saying, This chalice is the new covenant of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this chalice, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Nice to see you all this morning. Today's Mass is for the Doyle family. We're glad they're here with us. And the Saints Day today is St. Margaret of Scotland. She lived in Scotland about a thousand years ago. She was a great saint, a mother of eight, and famous for her love for the poor. And I can say this, that need are back in Scotland today. It's a tough place to be Catholic today. So as we come to celebrate this great saint, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Please bow your heads and pray in silence for the Doyle family. O oh God, who made St. Margaret of Scotland wonderful in her outstanding charity towards the poor, grant that through her intercession and example, we may reflect among all humanity the image of your divine goodness. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the beginning of the book of Revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show his servants what must happen soon. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who gave witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ he re by reporting what he saw. Blessed is the one who reads aloud, and blessed are those who listen to the prophetic message and heed what is written in it, for the appointment time is near. John, to the seven churches of Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before the throne. I heard the Lord saying to me, to the angel of the church of Ephesus, write this, the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks in the midst of the seven gold lampstands says this, I know your works, your labor, and your endurance, and that you cannot tolerate the wicked. You have tested those who call themselves apostles, but are not, and discovered that they are impostors. Moreover, you have endured and have suffered for my name, and you have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have lost the love you had at first. Realize how far you have fallen. Repent and do the work you did at first. Otherwise, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, those who are victorious will feed from, those who are victorious, I will feed from the tree of life. Those who are victorious, I will feed from the tree of life. 
Bless the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the ways of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. And those who are victorious, I will feed from the tree of life. He is like a tree planted near running water that yields the fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Those who are victorious, I will feed from the tree of life. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Those who are victorious, I will feed from the tree of life. He shouted, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. People walking in front rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, son of David, have pity on me. And Jesus stopped and ordered that he be brought to him. And when he came near, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? He replied, Lord, Please let me see. Jesus told him, Have sight. Your faith has saved you. He immediately received his sight and followed him, giving glory to God. When they saw this, all the people gave praise to God. Gospel of the Lord. Praise, praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Christ. It is truly a beautiful morning here. And so today we have this reading of the miracle of Jesus healing the blind man. You know, as I read through this and really started pondering on this, which is a relatively short, relatively short verse in the Bible, in the Gospel of Luke, only eight verses. It dawned on me that these eight verses were also almost like a microcosm of Christian life. Let me share that a little bit in my thoughts on this. So here we have a man sitting blind at the roadside. Is that really much different from how we begin our life completely blind? No idea, have no faith, no idea who Jesus Christ is. But then he hears and, and he recognizes. And that's what we're called to do. Right? We're called to recognize that Jesus Christ is in our world, is in our lives. So he does. And he cries out, Son of David, giving him that messianic heritage, right? linking him to the king. And what happens when we realize that Jesus is there, that we want him as our Messiah? The world tries to keep him from us. So what do they do? The people, they rebuke him. They tell him to be silent. And how often do we hear that from people? Who are you? You know, 
Why, why do you think you're special because you're a Christian? No, because we've chose to follow Christ. See, the world doesn't want to hear that. That doesn't fit into their, their view of how things should be. So that's what we experience as Christians. We get rebuked by people. But then the blind man shows us another example, right? What does he do? He is persistent. He is consistent in his prayer. And that's what we're called to be. We're called to be persistent and consistent in our prayer life. To look to Jesus every chance we need, every chance we have, every second of the day. To call to him to have mercy on us, to have pity on us, just like the blind man. And then, just like the blind man. When the graces of God are given to us, we need to fully understand that it is our faith, our belief in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that brings us salvation, that gives us the sight, that gives us the wisdom to know and to love God. And then just like a blind man, we're called to give glory and praise and gratitude and thanksgiving to God for all we have. So there, in just a few short verses, the life cycle of a Christian. So I would pray, my brothers and sisters, that the Holy Spirit continue to work within us and to give us the ability to follow Let us pray today for the Doyle family. Let us pray for Sandra's daughter, Amanda, who has the coronavirus, for Charlie Haas, who died from the coronavirus. I know so many of his family members have it. Bobby Morad's sister has the coronavirus and it's spreading all throughout the world. So we pray that the vaccination will be successful and people can get it and get back to normal. Also this weekend, we have a, a, a wedding uh, um, especially we pray for Trey Ladner and Elizabeth Feeney and, and for all those who have asked for special prayers. And we remember all those who have died. Walter Jex was a longtime parishioner here and he went to the Lord just that evening. And we remember um, uh, uh, Brandon Jarrett who was uh, killed in an accident uh, during the past week. So we lift up in prayer all those who have requested special prayer. Let us pray in faith. We pray for the intercession of St. Joseph, hope of the sick, patron of the dying, protector of the Holy Church, to guard us in this time of turmoil. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear me. Pray. For Pope Francis, they guide the church with wisdom and humility. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear me. Pray. For our bishops, priests, and deacons, that they have the courage to speak the truth in this time of turmoil. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear me. Pray. For those suffering from the coronavirus, that they may link their suffering to the redemptive suffering of Jesus Christ for the salvation of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And during the month of November, I love to pray for our faithful departed. They remind us where we're going, so let us pray. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perfection rise upon them. May they rest in peace. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful depart. To the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, God Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May these 
offerings of our service placed on your altar in commemoration of Blessed Margaret of Scotland be acceptable to you, O Lord, we pray, and grant that, released from earthly attachments, we may have our riches in you alone, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony, and you gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your word to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son you gather men and women, whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross, and see and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore now and for ages and ending, with all the angels, we proclaim your glory as we joyfully celebrate and acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heights. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the heights. For 1,987 years we've been celebrating the Eucharist. And one of the first documents we have outside of the New Testament that tells us about the early Eucharist is the Didache. It was the manual or the catechism of the apostles. It comes from about the year 90. And for a long time, it was considered part of the New Testament. This is what it says. As the broken bread was once scattered on the mountain, and after it had been, been brought together, became one. So may thy church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into thy kingdom. For thine is the glory and the power through Jesus Christ forever. And let none eat or drink of the Eucharist, but such as have been baptized in the name of the Lord. On the Lord's day gather together, break bread and give thanks, after confessing your transgressions, so that your sacrifice may be pure. May no one who has a quarrel with his neighbor join you until he is reconciled by the Lord. In every place and time, let there be offered to me a clean sacrifice, for I am a great king, says the Lord. Isn't that a beautiful description of the Eucharist? You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when as once for his disciples so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My Lord and my God. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Saviour, whom you led to his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and unto the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life to your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son, and confirm us in the bond of communion, together with Francis our Pope, Louis our Bishop, 
with all other bishops, with priests and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your faith and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph of Spouse, with the Apostles and Martyrs, with St. Margaret of Scotland, with St. Gertrude, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. peace Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under the Lord's name, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternity. Amen. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we who are fortified by the power of this sacrament may learn through the example of Blessed Margaret of Scotland to seek you always above all things and to bear in this world the likeness of the new man through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now for Ashley. Good morning. Good morning. So three years ago, besides friends and family, no one here today or watching online knew who I was. I wasn't familiar with the inside of these church walls. I didn't know any of you, and I didn't even know the famous Father Petty. <laughs> what brought me here today and to stand before you was not church doctrine. It was not the commandments. It wasn't even scripture, not even the Eucharist yet. What brought me here today was love. The love of 
two people to be exact, my grandmothers. The two women that saw faith in me and loved me when no one else, when I felt like no one else did. And the two people that opened their doors when everyone else had shut them. Like the blind man in the gospel, I once was blind, but now I see. I believe that today there are a lot of blind people. There are a lot of lost people. And sometimes maybe the rules and the doctrine we can get caught up in and they don't quite understand can keep them lost and blind. So my challenge for you today is simple and for this week. Love. Love with every ounce of your heart and every ounce of your soul. And just trust God to do the rest. Thank you. Very good, Ashley. One of your grandmothers I knew very well. She was a very dear friend of mine. And I tell you, she was the personification of love. So I can see why she drew you here. And I'm glad she did. And I uh, uh, got a cute email here. The Vatican Library contains Bibles of every description, all sizes, all languages, all translations. For instance, it has a Bible two feet thick and another just an inch square. One of the one of the guides with a sense of humor explained, the big Bible contains everything Eve said to Adam, and the little Bible has everything Adam said to Eve. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Masses end. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray together the whole the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Grant us the same Holy Spirit, and may be truly wise and never